All right, so we are going to um, create this this um, surface here, this loft. That's part of a soap dispenser. All right, so the instructions tell us to start off by creating a new document and to be sure that the workspace length unit is set to millimeters. So open up an on shape tab. Create a new document. Uh, we will call it soap. Let's see. And it said to set the workspace length unit to millimeters. So the document menu here, workspace units, default length unit, change to millimeters, and accept. Then I'll begin a sketch on the top plane. This will be the bottom profile sketch. OK, so we're going to begin a sketch on the top plane. You click Sketch. And I can just click on top over here, left menu. Now I have a sketch going on the top plane. I'm going to hide the initial reference planes. I'm going to push N on my keyboard to give me a normal view. Next, sketch a rectangle whose center is coincident to the origin. So we're going to need to use center point rectangle to start on the origin and then make a rectangle um, out there and then sketch two arcs as shown. Okay, so I'm going to get my center point rectangle. Um, corner rectangle is the show button showing. So I need to use the drop down menu and get my center point rectangle. First click is on the center at the origin. Second click places my rectangle. Then I hit escape to exit my rectangle tool. If I hover over the origin, you can see the, um, the, the constraints that it's put on there. It's um, coincident. This says it's coincident to the origin. And then these are midpoint constraints. That's what kind of makes it a square. Anyways, uh, we need to make those arcs. So three-point arc. Click once on this corner, once on that corner, and then I click once to place the arc there. And then I re repeat that down here. Click once on this corner, click once on that corner, and then click my third time to place the arc there. I'm going to hit escape to exit the arc tool. All right, so we've done that. <clears throat> All right, this one has a lot of stuff going on. In it. So first, um, make the two horizontal lines of the rectangle construction lines. So here, skip down to the hint down here. Remember the Q key is a keyboard shortcut for toggling construction geometry. So that means if we select these horizontal lines and then push Q on the keyboard, it'll switch them into um, construction lines. So let's try that. Um, click to select, click to select. Then I'm gonna push Q. Ta-da, that was fun. Apparently, you could also click that button once they're selected, but Q is the keyboard shortcut. All right. Um, add a sketch fillet of radius 8.5 millimeters to all four corners. Okay. 
So that's what this little curved corner bit is. A sketch fillet applies like a little radius curve to each corner and you'd pick the radius. So I'll show you how that tool works. So the sketch fillet tool is right here, or you can do shift F. Um, <clears throat> click or drag a corner or two curves. Okay, so I'm gonna, what when it's a corner like this, you can just click the corner. So click once, and now you'll see that this, um, this little mouse appears next to my arrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then use that, I'm gonna go and select all the corners that I want to have this fillet. And then I'm gonna um, change this to 8.5. And then that made it so that all those corners got the 8.5 millimeter um, sketch fillet. So it rounded that, that corner off. What else does it say? It says add an equal sketch constraint between the two arcs. So then I'm gonna select both arcs and then um, put an equal constraint on them. So select that arc, select that arc, and that's a weird thing that just showed up over there. And I am going to click and equal constraint, or I could just push E on my keyboard. So that means I should be able to, if I move things, the arcs are going to stay equal to each other. I want to check the constraints, make sure it has an equal constraint on it. <clears throat> it didn't get the equal constraint. So I need boom, boom, equal. There, now it has the equal constraint on those. Okay. So we've done all of that now. So the next step is to add these dimensions. We've got a width of 100, height of 40. The arc radius is 200. All right, let's do this. Get our dimensioning tool. This arc was 200. Uh, 100 from left to right. Forty from top to bottom. And now all the geometry has turned black. So I know that my sketch is fully defined now. So um, it says also to rename the sketch bottom profile and then accept the sketch. So I am going to see so where it says sketch one. If you hover there, you'll get the little pencils thing show up. Click that. And it said to make this um, bottom profile. And then accept that. And now that is my bottom profile. I'm going to, whenever I'm done with the sketch and I'm gonna make another sketch or do a, an extrude or something, I'll generally come over here and click on one of these little corners to get a, um, like a more better 3D view of what's happening. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. What's next here? 
So now we're going to create a new reference plane. We want to do an offset plane that's 50 millimeters above the top plane. And we are going to rename it middle profile plane. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the plane button is right here. So I'm going to click plane. And then if I just click on this sketch, it will say, okay, I'm going to make an offset plane parallel to that one. And then how much higher above do you want it? Uh, 50 millimeters. So right here, 50. And then we want to rename the plane middle profile plane. So now it has its new name. What do we do next? Now we're going to create a new sketch on the middle profile plane and sketch an ellipse. Uh, we want to be sure that the center of the ellipse is coincident to the origin and that the major axis is horizontal. Okay. So we are going to create a sketch on the middle plane. So select the middle plane, click sketch. Then I'm going to push N to get a straight on view. I'm going to make an ellipse. So that's in the drop down menu under the circle tool. So first click is the center. And if I hover over the center and it lights up, then that means I'm going to be coincident there. So that's what I want. Then I want the major axis to be horizontal. So I want to make bring my, my cursor out horizontal so that I have that little horizontal constraint there. Click when I have that lit up. Then my third click is going to be how tall is it? And I can just kind of click anywhere for that one. Then I'm going to hit escape to get out of my ellipse tool. And then I just want to like show I can kind of drag this thing around, but it's all it stays horizontal. Right? I can't like twist it or anything. I can just change its size now. Okay, next we're going to add these dimensions. So it's uh, 80 millimeters across and 45 millimeters high. So you click on the dimension tool or you can just push D on your keyboard and that will light up the dimension tool. That's kind of nice about it with the ellipse. You can just kind of click on it and then whichever way you move, it'll be like, oh, that's the way you want to measure. Okay. So uh, it was... 45 millimeters high and 80 wide. And then just to give myself a little more perspective, again, okay, I also finished this sketch, but I just want to like kind of tilt it so I can be like, oh, okay, that's what it looks like. Because it started to get a little um, convoluted with all these lines. What was next? We need to rename the sketch middle profile and then accept the sketch. So I'm going to rename the sketch to middle profile. And accept the sketch. And I'll click here to get back to this view. And now create a new reference plane offset from the top plane 125 millimeters. 
So again, we're going to do plane offset from the top plane. So we could just click top over here. And then it's going to say, okay, offset from the top plane. And we want it to be 125 millimeters. And we get our preview up here. That looks right. <clears throat> it's above the top plane. So then we're going to rename this thing top profile plane. Top profile plane. All right, then we are going to create a new sketch on the top profile plane and sketch a circle. The center of the circle should be coincident to the origin. This will be the top profile. So a circle. So top profile plane, start a sketch. <clears throat> you can click here or push N to get a straight on view. And we want to make a circle. Centered at the origin, so we want that to light up. And I'll hit escape to exit my circle tool. There's my circle. Boo, what's next? A diameter, 40 millimeter dimension. Then rename the sketch top profile. So dimension, um, what was it? 40. So geometry has turned black, so everything is fully defined. So I need to change this to top profile. I think that's what it was, let me double check. Top profile and accept. And then next, next is when we use the loft command. So um, you gotta be careful with this part a little bit. There are some things to watch out for. You have to click them. It said this one, it says click from bottom to top. Um, so let's do it. So, and I'll show you kind of why they tell you to do that. Maybe. So I'm going to get a, a view like this so I can see all the different things. I'm going to make invisible the planes. Okay. So you're going to select the loft tool. And then... Um, one th one way I've been shown how to do it is in order to, because sometimes depending on where you click on a sketch, it will, the computer will like make inferences. Um, but if you just select the sketch from over here, then it, um, it does it. It'll just select the whole sketch. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select them in order from here. So the bottom and then the middle and then the top profile. And then if we kind of rotate it around, you can see that everything is kind of, you can, you see this kind of um, ridge down the, the middle right there. It has, see how it's right in the middle. If I, um, if I was to do this loft and say like, start from the top, And then go down to this thing and then go over to there. Can you see how like the, um, this has like a different bump to it. It has, it looks like it's got like a slightly different twist to it. 
So depending on how you select things can affect the way a loft happens. Because depending on where you click on the circle um, or where you click on the geometry, it will try, it will, it seems like it tries to um, interpret what you're trying to do. So maybe you want like a, a twisted bottle like that. And so you'll figure out a way to make it look like that. But for this one, it's supposed to be um, symmetric. So we're just going to do, and I think if you just click in the middle, so if you just select like this middle region and then click the middle here and then click like in the middle here, then it will come out um, centered and not twisted. Okay, so that was lots of stuff. All right, so next we're going to, okay, we need to accept that. And then this is the part where we check to make sure everything's cool. We're going to rename it bottle. So I'm going to right click on part one, rename bottle. Okay, so the appearance has been changed. I want to play with the appearance. Watch this. Right click on bottle, edit appearance. Where is that? Remember the transparency. Make it a little bit see through. <laughs> yeah, that's super fun. All right. Um, we are going to right click on bottle in the parts list, select assign material and assign it to be HDPE high density polyethylene. So I'm gonna right click on bottle, uh, assign material. And I'm gonna type HDPE high density polyethylene. Check it out. And then um, we want to find mass. They're going to try to have us match up mass in grams. So first I need to go to my document menu. And in my workspace units, change the mass units to grams. Check. Then I can select bottle. And then mass properties. And it says 314.212 grams. Let's see if this was the right thing. Yay. All right. 